welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes trust me guys i miss shooting content for you all and i know many of you have been asking me when is my next video coming up so here i am today with my latest video and i'll try my best to be regular now so the topic for today is ratx which is known as the rational expectations theory in this video i'll be talking all about ratx i'll be talking about adaptive expectations its propositions the policy implications of ratx as well as the criticisms so stay tuned to the end of the video to know and learn about this very interesting concept also guys don't forget to like this video and do subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for always showering so much love on my channel also follow me on my instagram handle which is called 5 minute economics Firstly guys let me introduce this very topic to you and give you a little idea about the background of this theory so rational expectations theory also known as ratx which has been derived from the word rational and expectations was discovered or given by john f muth in the year 1961 Remember to remember this name John F Muth because many a times in many competitive examinations they do ask who developed the theory ratx okay so before moving on to the macroeconomic point of view of this theory let me give you a daily life example to help you better understand this theory so in our daily life also guys whenever we take any decision we take into account our past experience the current information we have as well as the future right whenever we do that we tend to arrive to Uh, making a correct decision so let us take into account these three things which actually is the crux of ratx theory which says that when a human takes a decision he takes into account human rationality information available to them and the past experience for example whenever maybe my sister is getting married and i want to purchase a lehenga for her wedding so it is my human rationality to purchase a lehenga which is not very expensive but of course somewhere expensive because it's my own sister's wedding so definitely i have to be rational while taking that decision secondly guys information available to them maybe you know uh, i know some designers some uh, stores which have good collections so that is the information i have regarding my purchase and thirdly past experience probably the last time i purchased a very heavy lehenga for my other cousin's wedding and i couldn't wear it in future so this time taking into account my past mistake that i purchased an extremely heavy lehenga let, let me buy something which is more trendy classy and which will be used in future as well so we tend to take into account all the information which we have we take into account human rationality as well as we take into account our past experience and that is how we arrive at making a correct decision so that is basically what ratx theory is now coming to the macroeconomic point of view it states that people's current expectations of the economy influence the future state of the economy definitely guys when we know how the economy is in the present we will take our decisions based on that you know how future may economy how is it going to perform we take into account seeing the current situation which is helpful in you know forecasting of interest rates inflation rates now seeing the inflation currently we can say okay maybe next year or maybe few years down the line how will inflation be so that is what ratx theory is considering the past the current we derive the future so before moving forward let me tell you a little about adaptive expectations along with rational expectations obviously so whenever we study about the ratx theory there's always a little information given about adaptive expectations which actually ideally was found before ratx theory came into picture so let me differentiate between the two very simple adaptive expectations only takes into account the past whereas when we are talking about rational expectations we take into account the past as well as the current information available to them doing that we have more as the name suggests we take a more rational decision whereas during adaptive expectations sometimes we go a little irrational for example last time i went to this restaurant it served me extremely bad food so i'm not going to go there again my decision is based solely on my past experience rational expectations last time i went to the restaurant 
they serve me really bad food but my current information is that my friend told me that their chef has been changed and because the chef has been changed their food is really nice so now i will be more rational and would like to go to that restaurant again even though my past experience wasn't good but the current information i have is that the chef has changed and i will take a more rational decision and visit that restaurant similarly during you know when come moving to macroeconomic point of view Sometimes when we take into account our decision, you know, inflation rates, maybe because last time the inflation was low, next time also inflation will be low. We take our decision on the weighted average of the past and in doing so, we sometimes go a little wrong in our analysis. Whereas rational expectations, okay, we know that last time, you know, the inflation rates were low, but we can see that prices and current are rising. So of course, the inflation will be higher in future. So that is the difference between the two. Moving ahead to the propositions of Rattex, so we just now learned that people hold expectations of their future by using all the available information available to them. That is what the Rattex theory states, right? So what is this information? Basically, this information includes the monetary and fiscal policy of the government. Just in case you are not sure about what monetary and fiscal policy is, I'll attach the links in the comment section below. I've made two very important and, you know, specific videos for these two particular policies. So basically, we know that government tries to control be it the inflation, the money supply, the taxes in the economy by these two very important policy, monetary and fiscal policy. So under that text, we state that the people are very much aware about these two policies. They do have the information about them and they know the working of these two policies. So they actually are not surprised by how government is going to react because they already are aware about these two policies. It states, like under RATICS, we assume that economic agents have full and accurate information available to them. Whatever information they have is perfectly correct. The decision what they take may not be right all the time, but of course they have all the information available to them. What are they saying that they do consider the past also while taking their decision and in case any, you know, in the past they've done some mistake, they've done some errors, they revise that, they learn from that, they devise the decision accordingly. As a human also, if we've taken a wrong decision in the past, as a rational human, we wouldn't like to do the same mistake again, right? So that is what they say under RATICS, that how is it working, how do people take the decisions on the basis of which policies, and that is all about the propositions. So moving ahead to the policy implications, let us study what does the RATEX imply on these policies. So basically we've just studied that people have all the information. So in case there is any discrepancy between the actual rate of inflation and the expected rate of inflation, they are saying it's just because of nature of a random error. That is the only reason because we already know that since people are rational, they will, you know, accurately take decisions. Also what I'm going to tell you in very much short guys that monetary and fiscal policies are ineffective in stabilizing the economy after we've studied RATICS. So what did John Muth say or conclude? He said that, you know, we already know that monetary and fiscal policy do help in stabilizing the economy. But since here we've studied that people already know what's going to happen, right? So people take their decisions accordingly. So government policies actually don't affect much in stabilizing the economy because we already have expected the future we've already based our decisions on that so it comes as not a surprise to the people and since it's not a surprise to the people you know they've already adjusted so hence it is ineffective in stabilizing the economy lastly it also states that you know because of ratex there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment, which is what we studied under Phillips curve. Again, I'll attach its link in the comment section below. So they have kind of proved the Phillips curve also wrong that not only in the long run, but also in the short run, there is no trade-off between these two variables. So lastly, guys, come to the criticisms of this particular theory. As I always say, be it the best theory in economics, we always do have a certain number of criticisms in every theory. So firstly, unrealistic assumptions. So the assumption that everyone knows everything is really very impossible and difficult. He said maybe the big economic agents, they definitely do, the big firms do, but for small firms or individuals to know about all the information, that's impossible. Secondly, costly information. It's not easy to actually collect, disseminate, distill the information. So how easily Ratix has, under Ratix, we've said that, you know, everyone has the information. That's not true. It's pretty much costly to collect this information. Thirdly, different information. In fact, the information which the government has and the information which the economic agents have, it may vary as well. 
and lastly guys government not powerless so definitely after concluding ratex we could actually see that government has no power because monetary and fiscal policies are ineffective but that has been criticized highly it has been said definitely it is not like that government in fact has a lot of power to influence the economic spheres so that is all about the rational expectations theory i hope this video was useful for you guys thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you in my next video pretty soon